Would you? Comment down below, would you? Would you seduce to save your life? Survey. Let's see what the survey says. Let's family feud that shit, okay? Hey everybody and welcome back. So, I did a vlog. It's a vlog I'm so excited for because I finally read the book, which one of my favorite films, Battle Royale, one of my top three favorite films, I should say, is based on. So before we get into that, I just want to say that this video is a couple of things. I also have a non-spoiler review of the book and a review of the film. So let's get into that. Battle Royale, written by Koshin Takami. This is a 666 page book, interesting number, and it is a big, ambitious, and entertaining spectacle that is not in any way watered down for mainstream appeal, trust me. This thing's got some angry stick it to the man shit to say and it is brutal, just the way I like it. <laughs> So this novel is about a group of kids who are on a field trip and they get gassed and when they wake up they are on this remote island in the middle of nowhere in Japan and they have these collars around their neck and they're told that they are going to fight to the death as part of a government decree of their dystopian dictatorship, the great dictator as so is called in the book. And if they refuse to participate, the collar around their neck will blow up. So that in itself gives it a notch of tension over the Hunger Games, because in the Hunger Games we all know how that ends. Like It was like, oh, we're gonna kill ourselves, we're not gonna get a winner. Over here it's like, you don't want to give us a winner, um, we don't care, we'll kill you anyway. And I'm like, bruh. So this book is super clever and it assumes that the reader is too, which many books nowadays don't do. A lot of spoon feeding, a lot of info dump, just not the vibe. So I don't know if any of you have seen one of my most recent vlogs of the book Nine Lives by Peter Swanson, where I was bashing it because we were required to care about nine people who I didn't give a shit about while reading the book. This book was so daunting because we're not required to care about nine people. We're required to care about 42 people, and it's almost 700 pages. So I was like, bitch. I don't know if I can keep up. Like, I don't know if I will enjoy this. I don't know if this will be for me, even though I love the film. I cared about these people like they were my own children. I literally got choked up in so many scenes. When they started dropping like flies, I started shedding tears. It was a thing. Experiencing this story as a young kid was entertaining. But witnessing it again as an adult, seeing all the nuances at the core of what makes this such a sharp satire of fascism is revelatory. I'm not kidding. I don't use that word lightly, but this is such a big deal for me. I love this book so fucking much. And I gave this book five stars, okay? Let's talk about the movie. Let me tell you why this film is one of my top three favorite films of all time. When I was in high school, this was my favorite film, and it still is one of my favorite films. I would practically make it a point to religiously watch it every single week. It was like a whole thing, trust me. It was a thing, multiple times a week even. I made it happen, okay? I did. So a lot of people, when I was posting about this book, when I posted my review of, of this book on my bookstagram, follow me on bookstagram, link down below, and on Goodreads, link also down below. We love having things down below, okay? People were asking me, have you seen the film? Have you seen the film? Did you watch the movie? And to answer you, yes, I have seen the film. Let's talk about the movie. This is a fantastic film from start to finish. It is fast paced, vibrant, and so full of detail. There are so many moments in this film that venture into great. A handful of people in this movie gave star making performances that landed them prolific careers and pretty decent roles in other movies. Chiaki Kuriyama, who plays Takako Chigusa, she actually came out as one of the big bad guys in Quentin Tarantino's Kill Bill. The guy who plays Shuya in this film, Tatsuya Fujiwara, according to my notes. Yeah, he was actually cast to play Light Yagami in the live-action adaptation of Death Note. Big deal. Killed it in the role. Awesome stuff. And Ko Shibasaki, the girl who plays Mitsuko, my personal favorite character. Mitsuko and Kiriyama stole the show, okay? They were such assholes. They played such amazing bad guys. I truly enjoyed watching them do their thing in this fucking movie. Just, you know, fucking shit up, taking no prisoners, apologizing to no one. Yeah, she was the leading lady in a Takashi Miike film, the guy who did Audition, Ichi the Killer, Blade of the Immortal, huge deal in Japan, and she was cast in the film One Missed Call, which was directed by him. So yeah, good stuff. Pretty much everybody in the cast played their roles with so much nuance, yet with enough anger and anxiety to just sell the 
the overall mood of the situation they were put in. Another thing I loved was how director Kinji Fukusaku just brought the world of the book to life. This film is one of the most accurate adaptations I've ever seen of a book. And dare I say, some of the changes they made, which I spoil in my vlog, improved on the book. I am not kidding. The changes they made toward the end with the PE teacher's motivation for doing a certain thing he did, amazing. The change they made in how Takako kills the guy who is likely gonna rape her, amazing. This movie is just so good! It's also so visually captivating. The costumes, the gore, the practical effects, the attention to detail. This is a very violent movie. Tensions are heightened by wild manic camera work. The camera work does make the experience disorienting, but not in a way that's distracting, okay? Which is good, because the experience of the kids in this situation is disorienting also. It's perplexing. They're like, what the fuck are we doing here? Killing each other with guns and knives, and poison, and our bare hands. And yeah, the shaky cam does give it that full-on, this is real vibe. But despite all that, it's so well directed that you never miss out on any character reactions or important details that would otherwise be not seen in the hands of a less talented director. It's got the shifting alliances, it's got the gory battles, it's got people betraying their friends to get ahead. Every single person uses any advantage they have to do what they can and survive. And yet it is a really good commentary on real life and a world that is so uncompromising and so evil. The most innocent and trusting people who are super naive are the ones that end up dead. The ones that literally will end up getting killed. It's nut up or shut up. And the director, Kinji Fukusaku, lived this evil himself. When he was 15 years old, Old. The year was 1945. It was World War II, and he experienced a bunch of American soldiers, a task force in Japan, opening fire on him and his friends. In order to avoid getting killed, he had to hide under his friends' bloody corpses and wait to survive. And yeah, this whole loss of innocence, being a young person exposed to unspeakable brutality. All his experiences come through in this film, and it is as hard-hitting and emotionally powerful as you can imagine. It's about innocence and friendship tainted by a deeply cruel and unforgiving world. And when you see the humanity of people come through and refuse to give up, when you see people fight for themselves and their friends despite the odds stacked against them, in the face of all this evil, the poignancy is unreal. So yeah, I'll use the M word. This movie is a fucking masterpiece. I love it. I can't say the same for the sequel though. Um, oh my gosh. I'm gonna get into this really quickly. Okay, so Battle Royale 2 Requiem is a film that exists. It's horrible. It's so dumb. Um, I don't know why this was made. There are some sequels that don't justify their existence, and this sequel argues against its own existence actively often, early on. It's horrible. It is terrible. The acting is terrible. The editing is so frantic. It makes the movie look visually incoherent. The entire premise is completely fucked. There's a terrorist group. It's the same thing. School kids are taken and they're forced to do something, but rather than fight to the death, they are tasked to take out this terrorist group. I'm not gonna say who the leader is because it spoils the outcome of the first film and the book, so I'm just gonna not say what's up. This movie was made in 2003, two years after 9-11. So the reason I tried to watch this movie, I saw reviews that made the film sound extremely wrong-headed and controversial. I literally just wanted to see how far they pushed it in terms of controversy. So I was like, what did they do in this movie? Uh, the movie opens up with a couple of towers getting blown up. This film was made two years after 9-11. That's all I'm gonna say on that. But even despite the poor taste and controversy of this film, it is horrible. It is stupid. To the point where they make certain people in the class team up with other people. And if one person in the team dies, the other person in that pair also dies. The collar explodes. The opening scene where this is explained is 30 minutes long. The first 30 minutes of the movie is exposition, set up, and a boring speech delivered with horrible acting. Okay, they round the kids up, they give them their weapons, they put them in boats on the way to the island to fight the terrorists, and they get shot at. A bunch of kids get killed by the guns, 
and their partners, by virtue of being the partner of someone who got killed, also die with the collar exploding 30 minutes into the film, and half the cast is dead. What the f Who wrote this movie? How did this movie get made? I do not understand what anybody was thinking when they made this film. I don't get it. I do not. What the fuck? Anyway, so with that being said, um, I'm now gonna show you my vlog footage of Battle Royale, my live reaction to the novel, and I hope you enjoy. beginning because beginnings tend to begin. Okay, so if anyone's wondering what I'm doing out here, I have decided to start reading my next book and I'm gonna be doing a live reaction to this book because, girl, this is a fucking momentous occasion for me as a person in the world because the book I'm gonna be doing a live reaction to is Battle Royale by Koshin Takami. I don't know if I've posted my TBR yet. It takes me a bit long to edit that shit. So I had planned on reading this book for the longest time, and for some reason, this month, the reading bug just hit me. It was like, yo, you gotta read this shit now. And then I was watching my friend Gabby's video, Gabby from Gabby Reads, and she hauled this book, and I was like, yo, I just got the audiobook. Do you want a buddy read? And she was just like, yeah, I do want a buddy read. And I was like, okay. Okay, and it turns out that Marcy over at Marcy Reads is interested in reading this book too. So yeah, I'm gonna be doing a live reaction to Battle Royale by Koshin Takami. Okay, I got the audio. We're gonna do this. This is gonna be a thing for us in this world, and I'm gonna just be spoiling the fucking shit out of this. So if you have not read this book, um, leave now. Go away. Get the fuck out of here. But just to give a little premise for those who want to stick around for the non-spoilery part, we follow a bunch of kids school kids, Japanese um, sophomore juniors, I believe, around 15, 16 year olds, and they are recruited for this program, this horrible, barbaric, inhumane program, and they're taken to this abandoned island and meant to fight to the death. So does that sound familiar? Because if it sounds like The Hunger Games, I thought so too. I was like, Suzanne Collins, what the f Even with how The Hunger Games ends, I was just like, yeah, a bit too much was plagiarized. There are way too many similarities in these two things. There are way too many similarities in these two properties for me to be accepting of this shit. Okay, backstory, this was my favorite movie when I was a kid. When I was like in high school, I would watch this movie all the time, show it to my friends, freak them out, make them think I was a freak, cause I was. I don't know if you've seen this channel, but I am clearly somebody who is in need of help. So I'm gonna start the book now. I've got the audiobook. This book is like nearly 700 pages, and if you think I'm gonna be reading this shit with my eyes, you're wrong. A giant physical book is not gonna happen, okay? Let's get started. A few moments later. So my first update, this book has a lot more commentary in terms of, you know, the government and government structures, and they refer to their ruler as like the great dictator. I don't remember if any of those terms were used in the film. Maybe the film was a lot less political, or 
Maybe I saw the film 10 years ago and all the politics and satire and shit just flew over my head. So that's my theory. But yeah, so far I'm enjoying it. The writing is readable. The last book I read is Empire of the Vampire and that writing was like super high fantasy. So like reading something that is written like normal conversational sentence structure, standard mode of talking and not like integration of French words and fancy high fantasy terminology this book is reading a lot faster. I had to read that last book in like 1.75 audio when I can normally go to 2.75 because of how difficult it was to read. But over here the audiobook is like super fast and I'm able to pick up on everything and that's a good time and check in soon. So I got to the part where they showed the winner from the previous um, games, the previous battle royale. It was like this girl who's just gone completely insane because she had to kill all her classmates. They zoom into her face and she's like doing this like evil demonic smile and it is just so fucking creepy and I was just like, oh my gosh, this is a broken human being. I'm having flashbacks to seeing this in the movie and Girl, that was like a scary scene. That was like fucked up. Seeing it as a kid was creepy and shit, but like witnessing this shit as an adult, you have more experience in life and dealing with brokenness and shit like that. And it just resonates on a different level. And yeah, this is creepy stuff. I'm just like, okay, okay. All right, so I just got to a funny scene when all the kids were rounded up in the classroom and they were told y'all are gonna fight each other to the death. Y'all are gonna participate whether you like this or not. And then this one bitch who's like annoying, she goes, you can't include me in this, my dad works in na 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 And the teacher's just like, you bitch, sit the fuck down, you ain't shit, you're gonna participate in this. And I'm just like, yo, at least there's no favoritism among the students. I mean, yeah, her dad's probably a head honcho somewhere, but bitch, you ain't shit, like, no one's getting exemptions up in here, okay? At least there's some fairness in the unfairness. I don't know what I'm talking about, but that was a funny scene, okay? Okay, so we got to the part where Shuya's best friend Nobu, who he grew up in the orphanage with, just got killed. This death was intense and shocking in the book, but I think it was more intense and shocking and emotionally powerful in the film because the two actors portrayed Shuya and Nobu with such grace and credibility. Like, you truly bought their friendship. Over here in the book, you kind of are just told about, you know, what their situation is. You know, Shuya being orphaned at an older age and having to grow up in this, um, like, Christian foster house? Foster care house, I think? But, like, they grew up in the same place. They were essentially brothers and schoolmates very close and Nobu gets killed in front of him. But in the film it's more impactful because while in the book Nobu gets shot in the head, in the movie this is the first scene where we see somebody's collar explode because these kids have collars around their neck. Basically if you're in a forbidden zone in the island the collar explodes which gives them incentive to be near each other at all times so the kills do happen. So yeah Nobu dying was far more intense in the film although this was a good scene and it doesn't take away from the book overall. People do tend to make an entire fuss about the accuracy of films to books and it's like a film can improve on a book and this is an instance of that happening. Okay another thing I really like is the concept of those collars because apparently if they don't kill each other within the allotted three days all the collars blow up and they all immediately die. So there's none of that um, Hunger Games suicide bullshit Remember when Katniss was like, I'm gonna kill myself, and Peta's gonna kill himself, and you don't get a winner. And although I get that Suzanne Crawlins was trying to do something, the fact that there's no emotion here, and it's like, we will fucking kill you. Your only choice is to emerge the winner, is far more intense here than it is in The Hunger Games. Period. Done. End of sentence. Out of here. Oh my gosh. So I just got to the scene where Shuya just leaves the classroom, and he is like, this is unreal, this has to be a prank, I'm being punked, like there's no way I'm actually being required to kill my fucking classmates, and there's no way they're gonna wanna kill me. And the first thing he sees is that girl, Tendo, with the arrow coming out of her neck, it's like, you are thrown into the action almost off the bat, and that's intense. That's insane. I'm happy. Later that day. Darling, you...
Honestly, the very fact that your own classmates or your own peers, people that you've known for such a long time, could potentially be perceived as life-threatening opponents is fucking terrifying, okay? Imagine being in school or in college and having to kill your seatmate, someone that you've like made friends with, somebody that you've likely known all your life, and then it's like, you need to kill this bitch. It's like, fuck. And already we're seeing some suspicions and shifting alliances, and I'm here for it. Damn. And oh my gosh, Kiriyama, this guy, he was so hot in the movie. The guy that they got to play him was so hot. And over here, he is so bone-chilling and terrifying. The killing people with a coin toss thing, he reminds me so much of the villain in that film, No Country for Old Men. The guy who would kill people with a coin toss and whose gun had a silencer and who had like no emotions, total sociopath, devoid of emotions, no concept of human life and human suffering and you know the gratification from killing and being the owner of somebody's destiny and somebody's fate and playing god in a world where you give yourself ultimate power over somebody's life. But the Kiriyama character here is so scary and it makes me want to re-watch the film to see if I was as scared of him there as I am of him here because he's like, he comes out of nowhere. He's like that Mr. X guy in Resident Evil. I don't know if any of you have played Resident Evil 2, but this character literally chases you throughout the whole game and he literally comes out of nowhere. He is responsible for so many of the jump scares in that game. I don't know if a book can give you jump scares, but he gives me jump scares. Like whenever the name Kazuo Kiriyama comes out, I'm like, shit's about to go down. The heart stops. It's intense, bitch, 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 okay. Yeah, so far it's been super accurate based on what I remember and I'm having such a blast because it's like scenes from the film are playing in my head. Yo, I'm on my walk and I just got to the chapter with Mitsuko. Mitsuko, oh my gosh, Mitsuko. She was probably my favorite character in the film and she's one of my favorite characters in this book. She is such a fucking asshole. She is this pretty girl who has a tragic backstory and while Kiriyama is the crazy sociopath guy who will kill people and who is more than willing to participate in the games, Mitsuko is the crazy bitch who is his female counterpart who can summon her emotions and cry on cue, on command, without missing a beat. She's super convincing and then when she lures you into her trap, she like snaps. She's like a rattlesnake. She is the fucking King Cobra rattlesnake of this book, and I am living for her. She's a bad bitch. She's an asshole, and I love that. We love the women who kill. I mean, you want to sympathize with her because of her horrible childhood, but you're also like, girl, girl, you're fucked up, girl. Like that first scene when she kills that girl Megumi with the sickle, she's just like, Argh! and like the way that that kill is described, the girl's sliced open throat is described as a baby with no teeth, like spouting blood out of its mouth. It's like, bitch. This book is gory, this book is intense, and I am living, I am loving it. I am loving it so far, okay? Chat soon. Okay, so another thing I really want to highlight is the dialogue in this book because yes, some people might be like, oh, they talk like little high school kids, which is exactly the point. Like, these are young people and they speak like young kids because they are young kids. And the fact that they do sound like young kids is a strength for this book because that just goes to show that this dialogue is credible. And that credible dialogue adds to the sense that these are young people losing their innocence. And this whole loss of innocence, being forced to grow up too soon thing, being put in a horrible barbaric situation reminds me so much of that book The Troop by Nick Cutter. If you like this book, you really need to read The Troop. I gave the troop five stars and this one's definitely feeling like a five star for me also so yeah spoiler alert gabby and marcy are loving this book too anyway i'm probably just gonna conclude my reading for the rest of the day over here i am supposed to meet some friends of mine to see doctor strange 2 so I'm probably gonna vlog a bit of that. We're gonna see how that goes. Hopefully I like the movie and I will update when I get more reading in. Okay, chat soon. Thrift shopping, look what I found. It's literally a book filled with like things that look like penises. Hello. We're about to go into the movie. It's getting really dark. I'm so excited. Are you excited? Yes. Yes, please. The next day. Hi, everyone. So I'm getting down and dirty in the earth because I'm about to ground. 
I'm about to do yoga, I'm about to walk barefoot into the grass, and just connect with nature because I'm about to do my daily yoga practice. Today I'm going to do a half hour sun salutation yoga. The poses themselves are easy enough, so they are, you know, beginner, middle poses, but the speed and frequency would require more strength. So this practice is listed as an intermediate practice and I've been doing yoga for years now so whenever I need to just come back to myself I turn to yoga and I turn to meditation, guided meditations because when I meditate myself I just my thoughts just spiral out of nowhere. So yeah I'm really excited to show you a bit of my practice, not the whole thing obviously. <laughs> Um, this is a vlog. This is not a yoga practice. It's been really hot So this is gonna be like my outdoor hot yoga. If you do yoga, let me know what your favorite pose is Let me know how long you've been practicing. Let me know who you practice with I personally use yoga with Adrian and yoga with Cassandra because I don't like taking yoga classes in person Because I I don't know. I mean it's it gets a bit competitive and you feel insecure and <laughs> I tend to feel insecure seeing how other people can do the poses way better than I can, yada yada yada. And I like to be alone with my own thoughts as I do yoga and find my own interpretations of the moves, which is why I appreciate Yoga with Adrian's whole find what feels good motto. And I don't know, I mean, doing yoga by myself is a very grounding spiritual experience and there's just nothing like it. I feel more in touch with my higher self. I don't know if that makes sense. But yeah, let me know if you're a yoga practitioner, um, do you like doing yoga solo? Do you like doing yoga in groups? Um, are you gonna edit this video and replace yoga with sex and masturbation and make me look like a fucking pervert? <laughs> but yeah, let's get started. Different day, same spot. Hello. It's, so it may not look like it, but it's day three of this vlog, and I have been reading Battle Royale by Koshin Takami, and I am loving this book so much. I, oh god, one of my favorite things in this book so far is the relationship, the bromance between Shinji and Yutaka. These are the two guys who are in that place, and one of them is trying to like, hack into the system, and they're trying to make, you know, fertilizer bombs to help them escape after they, you know, deactivate those collars on the neck. Watching them work together and seeing all the hacking and shit get explained should be boring and clinical, but for some reason it's so interesting sounding in this book, even though I have no fucking idea what's happening, but I do know what's happening. Like, I get what they're trying to do, but not the specifics, which is good. Like, normally shit like this is so boring. I don't know if any of you have read the book The English Patient, but there was like a huge section in that book where we had to learn about diffusing bombs 
bombs, which was the most boring fucking shit I've ever read. But over here, for some reason, I'm into it. I don't know. It's so good, and the bromance of it all is just so sweet. <laughs> I'm also loving the bromance of Shuya and Shogo, the guy that they teamed up with. Seeing them talk about rock music was just so sweet and so endearing. I believed their love for this shit. People who enthusiastically talk about what they love are my people. These are the kinds of people I'm drawn to. Oh, I also really want to talk about Takako Chigusa because her story is one that I find to be one of the more interesting ones because there's this guy that's after her that's been pestering her like harassing her, wanting to rape her and shit like that. And in the book, she kills him by stomping on his dick. Um, I just want to say that I think that her kill in the movie was a lot better. So in the book, like she, she stomps on his dick and she stabs him in the mouth with an ice pick, I think. In the film, she doesn't stab him in the mouth, she stabs him in the penis. Like right in there. She gets up on him, straddles him, and it's like a reverse, um, penetration like he intended on penetrating her violating her and she penetrated him with a knife and she had had enough of his bullshit women fighting back no means no so good i like the kill in the movie more it's more symbolic this book is so fucked up i love it it's so good it's so good Okay, so it's like a really nice and windy day today, which is good because um, the wind has been drying up my tears because we just got to the scene where there was so much paranoia and Shinji, I think it was Shinji, had killed that guy who he had like a bad experience with before the games who was trying to join their squad. Yutaka got paranoid of Shinji and then Shinji was like, I would never kill you if you don't believe me, you can shoot me now. And then they started crying and then Kiriyama comes out and kills them both. And yeah, I just, yeah, it looks like it's about to rain, so I might need to finish the rest of this vlog indoors. It's the third day of reading, so I might finish it by tonight. And I will check in soon. It's been a wild ride so far. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, as I was about to go in, I also just got to a scene where Mitsuko was being searched by these two guys. It's super windy, the crows are out, it's a very breezy day today, so I'm sorry in advance. So I got to the scene where Mitsuko was searched by those two guys and she like seduced one of them and she like kept the razor blade in her underwear and it's like, you know, a girl's gotta do what a girl's gotta do, I guess. <laughs> and yeah, she truly uses every asset and advantage she has and all the power to her. Girl, I would. Okay, girl, I mean, I would. If I was put in this situation and I knew that I could attain seduction of someone, should I try it? And that I could potentially save my fucking life? Save my fucking life, first of all, highlight that point. I would. No questions asked. Straight up, I would. Would you? Comment down below, would you? Would you seduce to save your life? Survey. Let's see what the survey says. Let's family feud that shit, okay? Serious question. Why did he put three women with the names Yuki, Yuka, and Yuko all in the same place? Okay, so I just finished my walk, and I also want to point out some of the visual symbolism. Certain scenes where someone coughs out blood onto a white, like, tablecloth or table. And you know how the Japanese flag is like a white flag with a red dot? So whenever there's like a splash of blood somewhere, he describes it as the Japanese flag. Because it's like visual symbolism saying that his government and his state is nothing without fear and violence, and they will do anything to quell an uprising. And, you know, that's what fascism is. It's all fear, it's all control, it's no respect for individual autonomy and decision-making skills, and it's giving few people power over everybody else at the threat of violence. So this book is saying some really serious stick-it-to-the-man shit, and I am living for it, okay? Okay. I don't know if you can hear the rain. It's starting to get pretty intense, but yeah. Just checking in to say that I finished the book. It was wonderful, it was amazing, it was a masterpiece. I absolutely loved it so much. I don't know if there's anything else 
just left to say that I haven't already said. I'm really glad that the people I read it with are also loving it slash do love it. I think Gabby's already done. But yeah, if they have vlogs, I'm gonna link their vlogs down below. And yeah, I'm gonna wrap this vlog up now. Five stars, incredible book. I hope the rest of the books I read this month are also really good. And I will check in soon. So that was the vlog. Thank you so much for watching. Like and comment and subscribe. Let me know if you enjoyed this. And yeah, I hope to see you in future videos. And as always, take care. I'll lose myself.